Hey there, my name is Josh Durham. I'm working with Matte Paint for this concept art tutorial. We're gonna be working with a cyberpunk theme today. So, you know, sketching out some cyberpunk cities, some scenes from those cities, and then just going ahead and picking which ones we like or combining them and forming our own finished product. So let's go ahead and start with the first step. The first step by obvious means <laughs> is to create a template of some kind of sketches because I mean you don't really have to I know some people um, I know some people that just have a blank page and they just draw squares and then sketch them out and stuff but what I like to do is I draw this or I made this template well, a while ago and basically all it is is two layers it's just a gray background layer and then this black bar layer just so you can draw behind the black bars and then you have this cropping already set now of course with environment settings uh what you end up having to do most of the time is it's going to be a landscape uh orientate orientation i mean you know of course some people make portrait stuff but most of the time clients are going to want some kind of like an actual you know scene in a film where it's just a square which is fine uh, the reason why is because most of the time in a film or a game, it's on a wide screen. So obviously they're just going to want to see what it looks like on the screen already. So what I did is I went ahead and set the rectangular tool to fixed ratio. And then I did 16 by 9 because that's what everybody's screen already is. So then I uh, drew the square rectangle and just copied it over four times. And then just tried to make it as symmetrical as possible just for a presentation for clients and stuff. So that way they can already get to the point without having to guess where one square ends and where the other one begins. So anyways, so now that we've got the basic fundamentals started, uh, if you go ahead and go to custom shapes. Now, I like to use custom shapes, this custom shape tool down here with this weird squiggly doodad. Uh, the thing is about custom shapes is they take a lot of processing power to preview them. Just to explain in case you don't know what a custom shape is, it's basically a vector based shape or you know image but it's all black and white uh so let's let's pick just some random example here uh this one so this is just a shape that's been cut out of some image from somewhere uh, apparently it's a waco machine of some sort and basically it since it's vector i can draw it as big as i need it to be and it'll render it out and you know it's nice and smooth it's not pixelated it's great however the problem with custom shapes is, like I said, they take up so much processing power because for whatever reason, Photoshop does not preview them here as a pixelated image. It wants to load them in this thumbnail. And if you have a ton of them open at once, like this, where you're previewing a ton of them, then it's gonna just completely slow down your computer and it's gonna make you wanna pull your hair out. So what I've done, just as a rule of thumb, is to keep them like three rows maybe per folder. The biggest one that I have is this one that's just generic environment concept art, which you can see is taken forever. There we go. So this is, this is just like a wide range of stuff that I have that I've just accumulated. And you can see the computer's already struggling with me here. But anyways, so for today, we're gonna go with the cyberpunk themes. Cyberpunk is very popular. It's like lo-fi, you know, Star Wars kind of started it, but then it, it turned into like its own thing with uh, Blade Runner and so forth and so on. But today, we're just gonna come up with some random cyberpunk themes and how I attempt them. So let's go with just some custom shapes here and I will go ahead and just start placing them soon as I can find one that I'm, I'm wanting here, we'll go with this one, this one's fine. So I, then there's no real thought process behind this as soon as it catches up to me here, there we go. So this is more of just a way to like lay out a composition uh, and just not really have to think about the, the composition. I mean, you're really just draw, you're just, it might as well be Lego pieces at this point. Like you're just placing general themed assets that already give some kind of feeling to it without you having to sit there and sketch it out and start from scratch and worry about, worry about the composition, worry about the detailing and the windows, you know, the lines and stuff like that. This is just a quick way to just go ahead and just throw it all out. Like this right here is is really cool because it's already got this uh, this vanishing point composition going on towards the right here. So the perspective's already already pretty dope, as the kids would say. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that for now. I'm gonna go look for a different asset just to play with. Um, let's go with let's go with something like this one. Yeah, something like this one. And of course, these have nothing to do with cyberpunk. I mean, this this one at the bottom left is a uh, Navy carrier, maybe? That's what it looks like. 
So with this, you could do some kind of almost the complete opposite of this this bottom left perspective here. But again, it's just it's just not anything. It's just a shape. This is just a ground line that I'm kind of hinting at, which is still the same shape. I'm just kind of I'm just kind of drawing a ground plane here just so I can get a general idea of where it is. So let's throw that there. Actually, this one might be cooler if, if the horizon line was about here-ish. Yeah, that's fine. Again, totally sketchy. Doesn't really need to look like anything at this point because right now you're the only person that's looking at it. There's no clients that are sitting behind your back. There's no art director that's staring at you from across the room to make sure that you're actually doing your work. This is just you trying to figure out some kind of cool idea based on uh, interesting shapes. See, I like this one. I like this one a lot. I've used this one before because you can, you can, I mean, this is still the same shape. I haven't changed shapes or anything, but if you just draw it narrow like that, you can have supports. So then it kind of gives this elevated view, even though you haven't actually drawn anything at this point, at this moment. So I think, I think this might be kind of cool if I just have like a repeating platforms here, something like that. Um, so let's go ahead and add some more shapes to the bottom left one and the top left one because they're a little barren at the moment. It's cool that there's one shape, but obviously in real life, there are more than one shape. Let's go ahead and add some buildings and stuff because this is again, Cyberpunk City. So it's going to be crowded. It's going to be cluttered. Most likely going to be raining. Not necessarily has to be, but generally is just because of the fun, cool factor of it being reflective and colorful and everything like that. So it's kind of just do some random, random quick stuff here. Just to get a general idea of what's going on. Where do people live? This one at the top right, I'm not a huge fan of. I think if we add some foreground elements and use that that piece that I have up there as like a uh, as a background element. So let's go ahead and throw some more actual building architecture instead of just the industrial shapes. Let's go with let's go with this. I know some people name everything, but I kind of just rather look at the thumbnail itself. So. Yeah, so the perspective on this is way, way warped. I do kind of like this idea of a corner shot. So if we do something like, if we do something like that, that might be okay, yeah. So also just to keep in mind, uh, in case you had any questions on the layout that I have my workspace, there's no good or bad, whoops, my bad. There's no good or bad way to have a layout. Uh, I just have it laid out to where it's my essentials. Uh, not the actual essentials thing that Photoshop has because that is terrible, but it's, this is just layers, HSB, because HSB is better than RGB because you can actually adjust the saturation because in real life, nothing is full saturation. And then the navigator. The navigator is really great just to have as like a small window up here because when you're sketching like this, you can see everything in your face. I mean, it's right in front of you. However, it looks like a mess. And in general, it's just a better idea if you look up here. I mean, just every now and then, not stare up there because you're going to get lost on what you're doing. But every now and then, just have a small window up here, and it helps you see the composition and feel the sketch better. Um, like right now, up there at the top right, the the uh, top left piece and the top right pieces are the strongest right now, just by pure looking in the clouds and your brain is filling in the pieces kind of situation. So what we're going to do is those are the two that we're just going to follow these two just for today's purpose. Uh, this bottom left one and the bottom right one could finish them out, probably won't, uh, just because from right now I'm not feeling it. These two are just really interesting at the top here. I will I will say that this probably needs to be filled in. So just for composition purposes, just make that black. Uh, I just did content aware, which is a great tool that I use in painting, but I'll, figure, I'll tell you more about that whenever I actually get to the painting part. 